Before we create another room, or another scene containing a different view of the same room, let's go back to room 1, the scene view, and let's click on the background object, and let's also make it global. So what that's going to do is we're going to be able to use the same object with different animations across the different rooms in our game, which is a more efficient way to do it. Now we can go back to the um, project manager here, and I'm going to click on add a scene, and I'm going to name the scene, missed that, let me try that again. I'm going to rename the scene into room two. It's still the same room, but from a different angle. Okay, now if we double click on room two, we can see an empty layout, which we're going to drag the background object and I'm going to manually adjust the position to zero, zero. And I'm also going to click on edit object and create a new animation for an object, for the object. So add a new animation, add, and the file I'm looking for is room two. That's the one. And I click apply. And then with the object selecting under properties, I change the number of the animation from zero to one. So here we have it. So now we have um, a room. Nothing is interactive yet because we haven't added any clickable objects here. Uh, but what, what we need to do before we start doing that is uh, a way for the player to actually see this part of the room because right now we are starting the game from room one and there's no other way, there's no way for the player to see what's happening behind them. So the way we're going to navigate that is we're going to go to our external layout, the UI layout, and we're going to add two more objects here. So let's add a new object, it's going to be a sprite, and the name of the sprite is going to be left. And we'll add an animation, and we'll load it from the eponymous file, left PNG. And we'll click apply, and we'll drag it to around here, and now we're going to add another object, and name it right. And appropriately, we'll add an animation and load the file called write.png. And we'll put it around here. And now let me see. So this one is positioned at uh, 270 pixels and the Y coordinate for this one is 254. They're not aligned at all vertically. So now we've fixed that and I think I scrolled out a bit too much. So let me fix that. Here we are. And I'm going to change the horizontal position a little bit as well. Uh, and I'm going to make these two objects global as well. So when we start playing the game, we're going to see um, two arrows. And clicking on those arrows will take the player elsewhere to other locations in the room. So if we test the, the, the first location now, we can see that, yep, the arrows are here, but they don't quite do anything yet. In fact, clicking here triggers a description of the door because there's a door underneath the arrow, or rather there's a clickable object underneath it. One more thing uh, I want to check is, yes, I want to move um, the arrows from the base layer to the UI layer. So I'm going to do that. Actually, no, um, I'd rather keep them at the base layer, and that is because when we hide the text um, in the text box, we still want the arrows to be visible, because the player has to be able to travel around the room at any time. Okay, um, one more thing we probably should add here is uh, we only get to see the room in this demonstration from two perspectives. This is one view, this is the other view. We don't actually need two arrows for that, right? So for the purposes of this tutorial, we're only going to have one arrow per each view. So that, let's say there's an arrow to the right here that the user can click on, and then they get to see the room, and then here the arrow points to the left, and then they click it. I think I'm confused left and right there. Um, they click it and they get to see the initial location. 
So we're going to have to hide one of the uh, the arrows per room. And it's tempting to try and do that by just adding an action here, right? So at the beginning of the scene, hide the object. However, I tried that and it doesn't actually seem to work, presumably because um, the by the time the engine runs this instruction, hide object left or hide object right, it hasn't loaded objects from the external layout yet. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty event, we'll add a condition. Uh, it's a common condition for all objects, has to do with visibility. So we're going to test the visibility of the right arrow. Okay, so if the right arrow is visible in the first room, then we're going to hide it. Again, common action, visibility, not variables, sorry, visibility, and we're going to hide the right arrow. So when we start the first room now, we're only seeing one arrow. Right, now what we also need to do is for the player to be able to click that arrow and see the other part of the room. So let us go back to the event sheet and let's add a new event. And we're actually going to copy and paste these two instructions here. Um, instead, we are instead of the clickable, we're going to be checking for whether the cursor is over the left arrow. So if it's touching the object to the left, and then the left mouse button was pressed, then we're going to scene, change the scene to room two. So let's test it now, and it works.